Welcome back to Anathesia exam preparation course video series and a new case discussing a 70 year old man huge unilateral emphysematous bulla difficult intubation coming for an emergency laparotomy for ruptured viscous uh, what's the anesthetic management including your intubation and mechanical ventilation our objectives in this case number one our idiom hope for the best plan for the worst a very good example in this case is difficult intubation our questions in this case are do you have a plan for anesthetic management in general what are the main components of this management plan what are your considerations in this patient do you have an idea what are the difficult association society guidelines for airway management and how you categorize this patient according to these DAS guidelines. Do you know any other difficult airway algorithms? How you evaluate your patient and preparing him for this kind of surgery? What's the anesthetic plan? How you conduct your anesthetic plan? So let's go. the way that makes you comfortable with conduct of anesthesia. I myself recommend or suggest, if you like, the flashcards anesthetic plan, way like this one. As you see here, this plan is divided into four stages. Consideration, evaluation, then formulation of your anesthetic plan, and conduct of plan. So in four stages, concentrations, evaluation, construct your plan, conduct your plan. Each of these stages has details below. Let's have an example with our case today. So what are the main components, details? So one by one, consideration, any pathology or physiological change in this patient or surgical details history in the main stem of question should be in your considerations then proceed to evaluation of your patient which is history examination investigations and consultations or referrals to different specialties then proceed to the next step which is construct your plan how you optimize your patient what are the goals in this patient optimization or tar targets and is there any conflicts in this patient and at the end what's your options for this patient are you going for general anesthesia or are you going for regional anesthesia or local anesthesia with or without sedation then how you conduct this plan which is divided into pre-operative uh, preparations then room setup induction uh, of anesthesia maintenance and emergence recovery and post-operative pain control these are the four main parts of any anesthetic plan from head to toe or from take off to landing how to conduct that in this patient scenario let's see let's start by considerations this is a 70 year old man so geriatric age with multiple comorbidities fragile patient physiological and pharmacological alterations so you should give for example your, your drugs a bit slower to allow for the slow arm heart brain circulation you should check for his renal profile liver profile in a, a trial to avoid any nephrotoxic medication or drug overdose second part he is a COPD man with a VQ mismatch with chronic hypoxemia pulmonary hypertension polycythemia he has a bullous disease which is mentioned in your stem of question. He has a potential for pneumothorax because of that. So potential for post-operative mechanical ventilation. So ask for any history of previous mechanical ventilation. Is he on home CPAP, on home oxygen, whatever. He has difficult intubation. So you have to assess or evaluate what's behind this difficult intubation. It is just melampathy scoring of three or four or 
it was Cormac Lehane, uh, grade 3 or 4. How did it end in his previous surgeries? Did it end by just an LMA or did it end by surgical airway? So all these are details. Why I'm asking this question now? Just because you need to mobilize all resources available in your plan of care. This is an emergency surgery, emergency laparotomy. So there is no time for the luxury or luxurious, uh, sophisticated investigations like pulmonary function testing, like an echocardiography. This can be requested if your patient is elective surgery. Laparotomy. This patient has a laparotomy, not laparoscopic, so you are expecting a very large wound or incision that will have an impact on post-operative pain control, that will have an impact on post-operative ventilation, atelectasis, and so on, so on. So. Major fluid shifts with such major surgery. Blood loss. So you have to book for blood. This is a laparotomy case. At least two cross-matched units. Ruptured viscous. You are expecting your patient to have sepsis in the background of this uh, problem. So antibiotics, you have to evaluate or assess for, the, for that. Uh, distended abdomen with encroachment on his breathing and respiration. You're expecting a full stomach patient. You're expecting a patient with uh, acute kidney injury, electrolyte and fluid disturbances and acid-base disorder, all due to sepsis. What are the DAS guidelines for difficult airway management? If you don't know DAS and you're going for European Diploma of Intensive Care or European Diploma of Anesthesia or membership fellowship exams, you have to go carefully and read difficult, uh, difficult airway society guidelines. These are the Bible of uh, airway management in uh, anesthetic management for all those exams. They are not big fans of American Society of Anesthesiologist uh, airway algorithms but you still uh, can read them and can say them, but they will like you more if you say DAS guidelines. So DAS guidelines are classifying patients, as you see here in this one, into two main categories, anticipated and non-anticipated, and you are behaving accordingly. So please go and have a look on difficult airway society. Now, let's proceed to the next step, which is how to evaluate your patient history, and you have to go through history of the present illness, how acute is the condition, since when it is started, how it is started, is there any projectile vomiting, diarrhea, how his pain score, what are the treatment given up to date, so like fluid resuscitation, antibiotics, steroids, all that details. Other medical history, he has a COPD, is there any history of intubation or mechanical ventilation and ICU stay? Is he on home oxygen or home CPAP? How is his exercise tolerance? Is he walking? Is he confined to bed? How is his baseline exercise tolerance? Then surgical history. Did he have any laparotomies before? Abdominal surgeries, uh, adhesions, so all that should be mentioned. Uh, then don't forget the ample history which is allergies, last meal, and medications in his past history, like antihypertensive medications, uh, diabetic uh, drugs, whatever, hypothyroid drugs. And did he have these medications? Because I'm expecting this patient to be anorexic for the last two or three days, so maybe he omitted those medication doses. So you have to have an idea about that. Examination, how you are going to examine this patient as an emergency procedure, you have to assess for A, B, C, and Ds. A, is, he, is his airway patent? Is he conscious to protect his airway? Is he conscious enough to protect his airway? Or he's drowsy or sedated or he's comatosed? I need to know this piece of knowledge before I proceed. Breathing. Is he tachypneic, distressed? How much is his saturation and respiratory rate? And is there any equal breath sounds? He has an emphysematous polar. So you have to have the baseline uh, of uh, auscultation before you tube this patient, otherwise if this emphysematous polar ruptured and you don't know the baseline, you don't know this is diminished air entry because of emphysematous polar or because he delivered a pneumothorax and patient will be on mechanical ventilation so it will be attention pneumothorax. So know the baseline by auscultation before you conduct anesthesia in this patient. 
maybe this patient has uh, asthma exacerbation or wheezy chest so you have to treat that so you should be careful in examination otherwise thorough cardiac assessment in circulation so signs of hypoperfusion uh, his blood pressure his heart rate his temperature pulse volume urine output all these indicators of perfusion then proceed to the next step with a detailed more detailed examination of his abdomen how the abdomen is distended rigid or tender and signs of dvt this patient has a polycythemia in his background because he's a copd so expect dvt don't complicate the scenario more so your threshold should be very low to give this patient any dvt prophylaxis unless surgically contraindicated signs of pulmonary hypertension like i side heart failure manifestation, increased jugular venous pressure, uh, right hypochondrial tenderness, or whatsoever. Uh, what are the IV lines you have in this patient? Is that enough or not? So you cannot proceed to theaters with 24 or 22 gauge IV line in this patient with inadequate resuscitation. So examine the patient for adequate IV lines, adequate resuscitation before going to theaters. So history examinations are finished, so we proceed to investigations. What are the investigations you're going to ask uh, for this patient? Number one, ECG is a 70 year old, multiple comorbidities, fragile patient. So I need to have a 12 lead ECG as a baseline, uh, then a chest X-ray. He has emphysematous bulla. You need to know is it right or left, how huge. And as uh, I mentioned before, plus the medical uh, clinical examination before we proceed. Uh, after that, uh, full blood count. So you need to know what the baseline hemoglobin of your patient, how much is his platelets, is there any ongoing uh, bleeding or uh, blood loss, is it a medical bleeding or surgical bleeding, uh, UNEs, you are, as I said, you are expecting an acute kidney injury in this patient, coagulation profile, blood cultures, because this patient could be septic. So you have to send for blood culture as early as possible. I will ask also for an arterial blood gases to assess his acid base uh, deficit and basic cyst, uh, lactic acidosis, so I need to have uh, blood gases in my hand. In order to construct my anesthetic plan, I need to know if there is any conflicts in this patient. Is uh, there anything to be needs to be optimized before that? And what are the options I'm going for? Conflicts in this patient is difficult airway and need for rapid sequence induction. So I may put nasogastric tube to decompress the stomach while he's awake and then proceed for a rapid, modified rapid sequence induction versus awake fiber optic or asleep fiber optic uh, intubation depends on the scenario. So that's the first conflict. Uh, optimization of this patient, I need to be sure that this patient is resuscitated well as per uh, the guidelines in septic shock. So sepsis one, three, and six. So every uh, hour there is uh, goals to be achieved. So what's the mean blood pressure target, lactic acid, central venous saturation, urine output, all these targets, keeping in mind it's an emergency surgery. So source uh, of sepsis control is part of your bundle uh, of management. So septic shock management is, need, is in need to be optimized. Uh, maintain the blood sugar for this patient uh, 8 to 10 millimoles, uh, DVT prophylaxis, as we said before, for polycythemia and high risk of DVT. Uh, if this patient has wheezy chest or asthma because of his COPD, you need to give some uh, nebulizations before that, before you proceed to general anesthesia. Uh, also, decompress the stomach with a nasogastric tube. Uh, options for this patient, we have just one option, which is uh, general anesthesia with an endotracheal tube with full muscle uh, relaxation. Uh, options for post-operative analgesia, either fentanyl infusion if this patient ends up uh, on mechanical ventilation or fentanyl uh, PCA if you extubate him uh, in theaters and then go to ICU. How to conduct this uh, anesthetic plan? So pre-operative preparation of theaters, uh, room setup, uh, monitoring and all of that. So we'll go for these details now. So how you prepare uh, your anesthetic theater before the patient is coming? Uh, first of all, uh, blood. So you have to request for two units of red blood cells, uh, cross-matched. Uh, you have to ask for an ICU bed post-operatively and the antibiotics should be given to this patient uh, in the proper timing. So uh, if he is coming for laparotomy with an open bowel or uh, septic proteinitis, I'm going for uh, some uh, gram positive coverage with amoxicillin clavulinic acid, uh, good gram negative coverage with agentamycin, and 
third one is um, metronidazole for anaerobic coverage. Uh, what you are you going to have in, in theater before we start, so the routine monitoring of ECG, and I'm going to take five lead ECG for this patient as an option. Pulse oximetry, uh, non-invasive blood pressure monitoring, and tidal CO2, gas monitoring, these are the basic or the baseline AEGBI monitoring guidelines. Plus, I'm going for invasive arterial blood pressure monitoring. I'm expecting huge hemodynamic changes in this patient. So invasive blood pressure monitoring from the start, maybe uh, awake uh, with local anesthesia. Uh, you need to have your vasopressors like phenylephrine infusion pump ready uh, in the background and ready to be connected before you uh, put the patient asleep. Uh, difficult airway management trolley, as we mentioned in this case, we need uh, to have a difficult airway management plan. Uh, you have to have the blood warmer, uh, you have to have bear hugger uh, or warming uh, blanket. Um, this patient is liable for awareness intraoperatively, so I'm going to use BIS or entropy monitoring intraoperatively. I'm using neuromuscular transmission monitoring for this patient. If you have the luxury of transesophageal monitoring for assessing fluid shifts, uh, cardiac output, and all that stuff, that will be a nice option also. I will use narcotic-based anesthesia with uh, fentanyl and small dose of midazolam, modified rapid sequence induction using rocuronium and sugamedex to reverse if you couldn't get a tube uh, in the proper timing. Uh, so again, modified rapid sequence induction versus awake fiber optic intubation. Uh, I will connect phenyl F and infusion to this patient before putting him asleep and start on a small dose of like one mil per hour of 100 mics per mil uh, then you can go up if you need to go up on the doses, on, on the infusion. How you maintain so balanced anesthetic uh, uh, techniques uh, with uh, uh, gas maintenance and avoid intraoperative awareness, again, based or entropy uh, guided anesthesia. Emergence or extubation, I'm not going to extubate this patient. I will send him to the ICU to optimize his mechanical ventilation, his acid base stillness, his temperature, his pain control, all that before I put the patient at the risk of extubation with a difficult airway known from before. Uh, sepsis control, pain management, as I mentioned before, will go for uh, fentanyl PCA versus fentanyl infusion or morphine PCA. I myself do prefer fentanyl PCAs rather than morphine PCAs. So I hope you find this scenario is appropriate to like, subscribe to my channel, and if you have any questions, just put it down here and I will keep in contact with you. Thanks very much. See you in the next case.